Thanks a million. And again, um, I'm very happy to be here. I'll just maybe make a few uh, brief points. I had lost my notes and the pen I, I used, I only came back this morning from a few days away. My pen leaked on the plane, then I had a pencil, so I probably won't even be able to uh, read my notes. But look, I was asked to maybe address this issue from the point of view, maybe, of human rights and maybe some of the work that myself and my colleague uh, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan is here uh, as well, independent TD for Dublin Central, have been engaged in over the uh, past period. And I am aware that obviously a lot of people here would be coming at this issue from a Republican or a Nationalist standpoint and Pete, that's absolutely legitimate. My own standpoint on this issue is from the background of a socialist and uh, an internationalist. And I would look at this as an enormous threat to civil rights and human rights in uh, this country on the one hand and then on the other the very clear realisation that if the state is allowed to get away with this even in one case then inevitably there will be a second, a third, a fourth and anybody is up for grabs in that scenario and uh, I think at that point of view it's very very important that we do have this campaign that this meeting is publicly taking place in Dublin today is an important uh, part as well because you know when you think about it I think the first point I'd like to make really is that it is almost incredible the absolute silence that surrounds this issue I mean if you look at the scenario of Guantanamo Bay everybody knows about the appalling rendition flights about the innocent people who are picked up held for years there in appalling conditions with no case to answer and then let out there's probably nobody in the world who doesn't know about Guantanamo Bay. It's a monumental embarrassment for the US establishment and for Obama who hasn't closed it despite his promises. Uh, and that's as it should be, absolutely as it should be, that everybody should know about that and be appalled. But isn't it incredible that here on this island, a hundred miles up the road, the exact same thing is taking place and there's not a single word about it. Not only is it not known about internationally but I think it's fair to say that there is hardly anybody probably on the island particularly in the south who's even tuned in to the fact that this is going on and in my opinion people would be shocked if they knew the scale of what is going on here and I think one of the key purposes of this meeting should be to look at what we can do to raise awareness of this and make it a much broader issue in society because every citizen north and south English, American, whatever, should know that this is going on and should be involved in a campaign uh, to put a stop to it. But if you compare that aspiration on the one hand with the reality on the other, it's probably not a secret that uh, the prisoners are most definitely the forgotten ones. Politicians in general run a mile from this issue. I'm not being uh, scoring points about anybody, but I think it's fair to say that all of the political parties are not touching, no, or none of the political parties are touching this issue with the level of seriousness that it should be. The uh, media have ignored it by and large as well, and even the appalling individual cases, they won't even focus in on that. Now myself, uh, Maureen O'Sullivan, and a number of uh, individual other generally independent and Fianna Fáil TDs have been involved in a broad cross-party group of TDs and senators who've engaged in a number of visits up to McGabry. Uh, we were over at the, at the uh, trial of Michael Campbell in uh, Lithuania there a couple of weeks ago as well. And really are using that group to try and highlight this issue inside the doll, put pressure on the tarnish to Eamon Gilmore in particular, the so-called great socialist and, and human rights uh, advocate that he is and all the rest of it, uh, and to really raise public awareness uh, about this issue. But I think while that can play a bit of a role, we're not stupid. We know that that is not a substitute to a real campaign development on the outside. And if we are to get change on this issue, then if you like a people's campaign uh, against internment is really what is going to uh, be necessary to bring this uh, centre stage. And I think, you know, the idea that internment without trial is back on the scale that it's back is a worrying uh, development. The new system, as the lads have said, is, is about revoking people's licences, people who are not charged with anything, not given a reason for why they're in, other than a generality of sort of your uh, security risk. Everybody here would know, even if we take Marion Price's case, you know, the charges were put in court. Marion was agreed to be released on bail, not just once, but twice. 
and then uh, that was ignored, overturned, and political interference, you know, the stalwart or the, the basis of any democracy should be that the judiciary are free from political interference, and yet here we have a court saying yes, based on this, that this woman should be allowed out on bail, and then the Secretary of State coming in and saying, do you know what, we actually don't care about that, um, because even though you've heard this case in open evidence, we know something that you don't know. We're actually not going to tell you what it is, but we know it anyway, and uh, therefore you're going to prison and you're going to end up uh, staying there. Uh, and you'll have to use your time to try and find out what it is we have against you, because we won't even tell your solicitor either, because your solicitor isn't allowed to represent you. And when you look at some of the things, like what was done to Marion and the allegations of her crimes, encouraging support for an illegal organisation, I mean, that could be absolutely anything, and it could involve absolutely anybody either. I mean, really, what it is, is it's not even internment for allegedly doing something, it's internment for your political views. And if you don't fit in with the establishment viewpoint, well then you're fair game. And that's the message, really, that I think has to get out and be registered, because that precedent has to be a uh, challenge because if they can do it to someone like Marion Price who had a license, who was, a, and, who was and still is a very sick woman and they could do that and keep her in isolation for over a year, treat her the way that they did and there's no doubt that that incarceration has taken a very serious toll on uh, Marion Price but if they can do that against her well then they can do it uh, against everybody else and the question is of course uh, who's next? And the reality is, a lot, there have been a lot of who's next. And I think Maureen will back me up. Every time we go up to McGabry, we meet somebody else who we didn't know about the first time we were there. And the list just gets longer. And in some ways, each case is nearly worse than it is. Because, you know, once people are interned, they've devised this incredibly ingenious situation that the same minister who revokes your license is the one who appoints the commission to hear your case. And you're not entitled, and your solicitor's not entitled to any of the information. They'll appoint someone for you, and you don't know who he is, and he can't meet you, and they'll have the case, and they won't tell you about it, but they'll let you, let you know afterwards. Now, I honestly think that if people in uh, realise this, they would be appalled that this is going on in the present uh, point in time. And it is the case that there must be now hundreds of people who are out on licence, who are seriously scared, and who must see their day-to-day -day activity curtailed by the fear of them being swooped down upon and taken in as well. Not to mind the other political activists, like I know, will be dealt with the likes of Stephen Murney, who were never uh, you know, in, in prison before, but who are serious political activists on the ground, who maybe have a different viewpoint than the establishment, uh, and that they become then uh, fair game. So I, I would echo the points that there needs to be a broad campaign to force a change on this policy. And I know the group here doesn't focus particularly on individual cases, but sometimes individual cases can be the way in to waking up ordinary people out there who maybe just tune in and out of issues. And, and cases like Martin Corey's, to be honest, are so shocking and horrific uh, that if they don't wake up people, I, I don't know what would, because this man has been in turn for three and a half years, never charged, never questioned by the PSNI, no idea what he's there for except some broad idea that he's a risk of something. Of course, he doesn't agree with the peace process, as he's perfectly entitled to, to do. He was a supporter of Republican Sinn Féin, which he's perfectly entitled to do, and a man who was getting out uh, involved in his, in his uh, life, and he doesn't know uh, what he is uh, supposed to be there for. And we have to register, you know, this is in clear breach of many international human rights regulations and viewpoints where he should be entitled to uh, parole on an annual basis, but now people here will know that he was supposed to have a parole hearing on the 2nd of September, his 63rd birthday, by the way, and two days before that hearing, his legal team were told, it's off again. And you know what? We're not even going to tell you when it's on. We don't know when it's been held. And that has happened to that man so many times that it is akin to severe psychological torture, in my opinion. And having met him on a number of occasions, I think the man is completely, has to be demoralised, uh, disillusioned, 
Imagine the, being somewhere where you shouldn't be for three and a half years and feeling that the state that is responsible for putting you there has no legal basis to doing what they're doing and yet they've been able to get away for it with it for three and a half years. That is some concept and some uh, issue to have to uh, deal with. And I think, you know, the fact that sort of this basic standards of normal democracy, that if, you're, if you do something wrong, well, first of all, you should be told what it is. You should be questioned about it. You should be entitled to have a trial. You should be entitled to an appeal. And all the rest of it, that these things are thrown uh, out the window. And I would certainly like to see cases like that being rallied around in a very serious way, the way in which, you know, the broad letter that was signed for Marion Price, that was signed by a lot of NGOs and TDs from different groups and councillors and trade unions and stuff, I think we need to do that in other cases like Martin's, like Stephen Murney's case that I know John is going to deal with, because it is a case of internment by remand. We leave you there, we won't hear the charges, and should we know at the end of the day when the case gets heard, it's going to be thrown out because actually you have no case to answer for at all, but we'll drag it out through the legal process and keep you there in order to frustrate you, demoralise you and stop other people from getting involved. So I do think this is a huge issue. I think it will affect loyalist prisoners. We've met some of them as well. Some of them have look at this starry eye. They think that the Republican dissidents get everything in prison, that they're well looked after, that they get all the publicity and everybody is nice to them and no one is nice to, to their side. But I think they will be uh, involved in this uh, process or be the victims of uh, this as well. So look at, I think, you know, globally, there's been a big increase in the suppression of legal rights, in surveillance of citizens. What's going on with the persecution of the key legal teams who are defending uh, prisoners in this regard is frightening. And it's not that long ago since Rosemary Nelson, but the persecution that legal people are being put under in the North is something that needs to be uh, put the spotlight on. We're looking at a situation where the future for young people in the North and in the South isn't very favourable. And people are going to want to organise to try and change society for the better. And if issues like internment are not dealt with now, then rules which are now being used against Republicans will be used against everybody. And I think we have an opportunity now to do something, to broaden out the platform and to try and make this an issue which the establishment will not ignore because to me it is uh, on a par, it is our Guantanamo Bay and people, every neck of the globe should know what's going on and should be taking action to stop it.